But notice what's happening in the text. John's been doing his thing. He's been baptizing in the Jordan River. His ministry, for the most part, up until this point in the early chapters of John, has been growing. It's been thriving. God has been blessing it. But here in this story we just read, a few folks come to John, and they're like, hey, John, have you noticed something? Have you noticed that so many of the people that were following you, that were part of your ministry, they're going to follow this Jesus guy now. So John, don't you see that your ministry is like kind of declining a little bit? Like your ministry is not growing as much as what it was before. John, what are you going to do about that? Notice how John doesn't seem to be phased at all in that moment. Notice how John has like this centeredness, this groundedness, because he's not like panicking, he's not worrying, he's not, oh my goodness, what I had thought God was blessing me with, what I thought God was building for me is, is Donald Dwelling. No, no, none of that's happening in John's life. John has this conviction, this clarity as to who he is and to who he's not. Because if you remember the story up until this point, if you just flip a page or two back in John chapter 1, John had already been asked this question before. People had come to John in John 1, and they had asked John, Hey, John, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? John, who are you? And how did John respond? Just three simple words. I am not. I'm not. I'm not the Christ, I'm not Elijah, I'm not the prophet. See, John, John understood his limits. He understood the limits God has given. He understood who he was not. And I think that's such a gift that John was able to have and to receive. The gift of knowing exactly who he was not. He doesn't have to pretend, he doesn't have to strive, he doesn't have to be someone God has not made him to be. John is able to say with clarity and conviction, I am not fill in the blank. 